everyone this is cat coloring with yet another video this time it's a review of the castle arts premium pastel tin pencils and i've got them in a 48 package so i am really excited i bought these together with the castle art metallics uh, pencils that i uh, recently did a review on and you can find it on my channel so Pastel tints. I am really excited. Let's see what this... Oh, here they are. In a very, very nice tin box. So I know that they are protected at least. So, and you can see here, they have colored. There's also a user guide and tutorial included, just like the other castle art pencils I have made a tutorial about. So let's see when we remove the plastic sheet here. So nice tin box here and also fairly easy to open. We have this fine card here. Join the castle club today. This is in all the pencil tin boxes. And also, we can see here, need any help? Contact us at castlearts.com. Okay, nice. So here we have a color and product guide. This is in all of the pencil tint box cases and presumably also the pencils in the SIBA cases. Um, we have here a uh, tutorial, create a pastel pencil illustration in six easy stages. Fairy queen. Okay, so this is a fairy queen. It looks like a medieval queen, but okay. And you can see here, we have here an outline of all of the colors and they do look pastel like very light and bright colors and not a lot of dark colors. We must say a lot of colors that could be used as skin tones. Coral blush, peach cream, cream rose. And then we have to completely unfold this to see the tutorial. And uh, they say that they have a tracing paper uh, and the template is from their website. So you can take the template from the Castle Art website and draw it onto tracing paper and transferring to a smooth, heavy paper. Um, and this is a very intricate drawing. We can clearly see that there are so many details with the windows in the background. Well, it's perhaps not easy to see this, but if we move on. So when you have transferred to a paper, all of this, and it's quite a lot, I must say, then you should layer down the light tones over the background and they have six different colors what looks like a yellow and a darker yellow and then we have what looks like a bit of skin colors a dark and a light one uh, something it looks like gold um i think it is gold and then a um, sort of a light purple color it looks like the Blue Daisy, but I can see from the number it's actually the Wisteria. Wisteria? Wisteria? Yeah. So again, six different colors, and you can see here, you really have to um, look carefully if you want to see how they have colored and layered and blended these colors. Then you move on to step three. By definition to the background, continue intensifying the colors on our two beautiful subjects. Well, yeah, we have here eight new colors and um, it's not always easy to see where they are supposed to be in this drawing. You can see here that the in part two here, step two, the Wisteria is on her dress here and then we can clearly see that we have some other colors i would guess that number eight which is the coral blush is one of those colors but it could also be number seven the petunia pink and where is which color here it's difficult to see uh, step four adds another six colors some greens light blues 
and you will have to again look carefully to see you can see some green here and here and here but it's not that obvious where this green is supposed to be and uh, step five build the richness of the color layering it says blending out to bring out the depth of light and shade and then we have again eight colors some of them have been used before some of them no i actually think that some of them are quite new and you still have to find out where they are and in the final darker tones four colors and again you will have to guess to find out where they are it's well it's not um, a great tutorial it's uh, a nice inspiration um, but if you were a beginner I would be very confused of this very intricate uh, drawing and also the lack of where to put which colors so we have a pastel tin pencil tester sheet of course I will make my own but it's nice that it's there um, it's not quite big here but it gives a nice um, overview of all of the colors from orchid white nice name to the peach rose down here um, in this lid we can also see the colors take it over here you can see it and it also starts with the orchid white and ends with the peach rose so their order of the pencils on the colors on the lid and the tester sheet is the same so let's see if they are in this order down in the box. They weren't with the Castle Art 120 set I did a review of, and they were certainly not with the um, metallic pencils. We also have this uh, pamphlet here, pastel tin pencils, taking your art to the next level. And it's just like the other um, pencils that I have looked at and reviewed. They have a um, tutorial here with the colors and how to shade and sh lay down shadows, uh, how to do the strokes, uh, how to use uh, blending mediums if you want rubbing alcohol or natural oils or Vaseline or baby oil or blending powder or just mineral spirits. So um, we also have here layering on the colors. You can see what colors you get if you layer different colors. Um, nice to have uh, an explanation of burnishing uh, so you can see if you use a colorless burnisher, a colorless blender or a white pencil, the result. It's actually quite nice to have these texturing techniques and so on. I really like this about Castle Art, that they have these um, in-depth um, pamphlets here to explain um, a lot of techniques and methods. Uh, of course, not everyone can learn by just reading. We also have a pastel tin pencil range of colors here in this uh, flower with the names and the colors. It's actually quite good uh, to have this one. And also we have a normal color wheel with the primary colors, secondary and tertiary colors. So very nice to have. I think this is very good. The castle art really does a lot out of these pamphlets. And the protection sheet, which covers all of the pencils. And here they are. And it actually looks like that they are in the order, just like the order from the lid and the tester sheet. Let's take a look at some of these. Let's look at the first one. And it is the Orchid White. We can see here, it's actually quite difficult to see the name. Perhaps it should have been in black because it's in white and I can hardly see it. Uh, and I'm not sure that you can on camera here. We also have a number here, number one, uh, PT for pastel tint. And on the other side, Castle Arts pastel tint. And it's uh, a lighter kind of wood and they are a bit blunt so they will have to be sharpened. I'm very very um, nervous about the sharpening. You know that I have had troubles with both the metallic pens and the 120 set when I sharpened them. A lot of them cracked and broke. So um, but I have gotten myself a new sharpener. More about that later. But it really looks like that they are in the correct order here. Saffron number three also here on 
the tester sheet number three saffron and also actually on the lid so i don't think that i will have to change the order of the pencils so that they match the tester sheet and the lid they are in the order they are supposed to be Thank you, Castle Art. This is actually quite an improvement from the other two sets, that they are in the correct order. We also have this uh, lit system here, this tray system with these, and I pull them a bit hard to see if they are broken, but they are not. So that's really, really nice. If you have seen the review of the 120 set, you would know that the first tray I lifted was uh, this one was broken. So lot of light beautiful pastel colors here um, and I think that I want to use them when I color yeah well flowers um, and spring drawings they are really really nice uh, down here we have some darker colors or more bright colors actually we have some nice greens here teal and blues a lot of light blue colors and a, just a couple of dark colors i think that this one is perhaps oh yes it is the hydrangea number 40 and this will be excellent to coloring yeah well hydrangea flowers together with some other of these blues we have some purples and just a couple of grays Winterberry, it's called. And the last one, Peach Rose. I wouldn't have got Peach Rose here. Does that match the tester sheet? Yeah, it was Peach Rose, Winterberry, the last two ones. Um, excellent. So now that we have looked at them, I think that I will sharpen them and start swatching. So I have now sharpened all of my pencils using my new pencil sharpener, uh, the Dahl 133. And I bought this as a recommendation from one of my subscribers. Thank you so much, uh, Solvay Shukai, uh, who advised me to try this one because of my last review of the metallic pencils where uh, some of them cracked and broke all the time. It was actually quite easy to sharpen them with the Dali 133. But one thing that I noticed, and there is still some room for improvement here, is this wood that uh, Castle Art uses. You can see here, it has been, you can see it here, it has been quite hard on the wood from the pencils. Um, and on a lot of these pencils, you can clearly see it. Oh, you can see it here, especially here, that it has sort of scraped the wood and then down the lead. The pencils are sharp enough and they don't seem to break uh, by using this pencil sharpener. But I think it's the wood that's the problem, really. Uh, also with um, the other pencils, it's the wood, it's not good enough. So it um, you can see here it's almost scraped off can also see with this pencil here also scraped off and bits of the wood is clearly visible here and if I take it up closer you can see it here on all of the pencils so it's not just one pencil it's all of them where you have these bits of the wood out because the wood is not very um, good it's not such a good quality of wood for these pencils but you can also see that the colors are absolutely gorgeous uh, and they actually match the from the lead to the paint of the pencils a lot more than with both the metallic pencils and especially the 120 premium soft touch set um, it really matches a lot better with these pencils. So this one broke. You can see it's a bit shorter than the rest of them, but I'm not quite sure if it wasn't my fault because um, I had sharpened almost all of the pencils and it was quite full. So perhaps it was for this reason that uh, it sort of broke just in the beginning when I started to sharpen it because then I just sharpened a bit more and now it's actually quite nice. And again, it doesn't look to me that it's broken 
so perhaps that was my fault. I would give Castle Art the benefit of the doubt with these LEDs and these um, pastel tint pencils. You can also see here, not one of these broke at all, but you can still see with the wood here that um, it is quite hard. And I used this because it sh uh, is supposedly very good to, um, to pencils. But you can still see here that the wood has taken damage. But not the rest of the pencils. There are no marks or anything from when I put it in the pencil sharpener. So I think the problem with um, the castle art pencils really is the wood used for the pencils. So that was the sharpening. So I have uh, made my color uh, swatch chart here and we'll just fill it out with the names and then we will start swatching. The swatch chart has been filled out with the numbers and the names of the colors, so I will begin swatching. And I will be starting with this orchid white. And you can see that I'm using a white paper, just a white normal printing paper. And I don't know if you can see it, I can hold, hold it up in just a minute. But you can clearly see the color here. So this orchid white is not a normal white. It's a little bit colored. You can see here. You can actually see it against the paper. It has sort of a very light creamy tone to it. So, let's look at the Mimosa, which is number two. I <clears throat> like the fact that a lot of these pastel tint pencils have flower names. Mimosa, Orchid, Magnolia, uh, Almond Rose, Petunia, Pink, Amaryllis, Foxglove. Actually, Foxgloves are one of my favorite flowers to color. There are a lot of them in the... Uh, Maria Trolles books. Oh, this is a very, very nice color, this mimosa. <clears throat> and saffron, number three. I really like to do these swatch charts and especially my own because I have a lot of space here. So I press hard and then I ease the pressure and then it's very light here. And then I can see how the color changes. It's uh, not as clear as with a uh, very bright and darker colors, but you can clearly see that um, some very beautiful colors here. So let's try the Magnolia. A little bit of a lighter color than uh, the saffron and we can already compare them here this is the color of uh, the saffron and well it doesn't quite match the color on the paper the paint color but here you can see it's a very good match from the lead down to the paper <clears throat> and that goes for the mimosa, too. And the orchid white. And also the magnolia. And they are very, very beautiful pastel colors here. So I will now just... Um, stop talking and swatching and uh, show you the colors in the end.
now I have swatched them all and you can see them here on this watch chart and they are, I must say, beautiful, beautiful pastel colors. I love the colors, but I have always been from, I was a, a child is really, I have always liked pastel colors a lot. And my favorite pastel colors were for many, many years, uh, a, a, a um, lilac the color like the, I think it's called Wisteria, like this one, and a pink like this Foxglove, a sort of yellowish like this Mimosa, and a color like this Delphinium and the Viridi, and also a color like the Blue Mist or the Lobelia. I um, love pastel colors, really I do. So, but we have to look at these objectively and um, so set aside my love for pastel colors. I uh, love the names of a lot of these colors. Jasmine, Bayberry, Begonia. As I said that a lot of them have uh, flower names. Uh, the name of the pencil does not say anything about its uh, color, except for these blue daisy and blue mist and uh, juniper lime. You get an idea of the color here, but uh, this one, cow, I actually think that I divided the word wrongly, cow, cowslip, cow's lip, not cowslip, uh, cow's lip, I think it's pronounced. Um, it doesn't give you an idea of this very pale greenish uh, sort of color. So um, let's look at them. You can see here, I will put it up so you can see it a lot better, that here we have this orchid white, which was not a um, normal white, but sort of an... Um, a little bit of creamy tone to this white. It's a bit of a yellow tone in it. Um, if I had to compare it to something, I would probably compare it to the ivory from the Faber-Castell Polychromos. It reminds me of that ivory color. Then we have a, a little light yellow, the Mimosa, and then we go to some colors I would clearly say are light skin colors. Uh, we have the Rosa and Almond Rose, and down here we have the Peach Cream. We also have Magnolia and Saffron. Um, so a bit of a light skin color tone here. We also over here have some of the darker skin tones, Snow Waffle, Carnation. I think that Carnation is actually also a flower. Uh, cream Rose and Apricot Twist and Candy Tuft. I would say that these are more darker skin tones. So there are a lot of possibilities for using these colors to um, color skin in various coloring books. Then we have some uh, pink colors here. We have the Fox Glove, Amaryllis and Blushing Rose. And then we have some more salmon-like colors, like petunia pink, which is a light salmon, and then the darker coral blush. And then we have a color which I am a bit puzzled. It uh, is in this set, the Inca Gold, because the Inca Gold is a um, very bright color compared to the other pastel colors here. It really shines out both on the swatch chart and also when you look at the coloring pencils in the set with the coloring of this Inca gold. It's uh, like a um, darker yellow ochre, actually, but it's quite beautiful. I think that it would work very nicely when you use it in your coloring books. We have a lot of um, green colors and color tones we have from this jasmine over here. That was the one I accidentally broke when I sharpened it. And the lime coral, which is a very beautiful pale light green color. Um, the green flower, a bit darker, and the Viridi and Angelica, also darker, especially the Angelica. I think it's, it, it is the darkest of the colors here, this Angelica. We also have some very pale uh, green colors like the Savannah down here and the Daylily also. Then we have some more limeish sort of colors. Juniper Lime reminds me of the Lime Peel in the Prismacolor set and the Sunflower also reminds me of a kind of a light mossy color. We have begonia and cow's lip. Uh, and I think that a lot of these green colors we have here would do very nicely as background colors, actually, when you, you know, if you have uh, one of Johanna Besford books, for example, and you have one of these uh, wreaths or circles filled with flowers, um, then 
you can of course color the background and I think that a lot of these green colors or greenish colors would do very nicely as background colors for some of um, the drawings in her books. Then we I also think. have some uh, more teal and turquoise tones here. We have a beautiful jade here, um, a bayberry, funny name but a lovely color. And then we turn to the more turquoise and bluish colors here with the delphinium as a very beautiful light turquoise color, a blue poppy, a very very pale light blue color and then we have some more color in the blue daisy and blue mist blue daisy a bit darker than the blue mist and also here we have the um, lobelia that's a classic light uh, blue color very beautiful the blue bell also a bit brighter actually uh, perhaps almost too bright to be a pastel tint color uh, the larkspur also a dark color it's sort of a blue gray color. We have the hydrangea, which is also a very dark color for a pastel tint set, but it's really, really beautiful in the coloring here. I can clearly imagine using this when I, I'm, when I am coloring flowers and especially hydrangeas. It would go very nicely with the bluebell and the heather and the wisteria, I think it's pronounced. The heather, also very be beautiful uh, lilac color. We have some more purple colors here, the tickle pink, funny name for a color, but it's really nice. And the camellia, it's more like a pink color, actually, I don't know why it's here. Perhaps it, it's supposed to be some sort of a light magenta color. We have the jelly bean, this also looks a lot more pink yeah, than purple. And then we have a color, and I would say it reminds me of um, the rosy beige um, in the Prismacolor set. It's a color I haven't used very much, but when I use it, it's actually quite nice. Uh, it's, I think it, if, it, if this was Danish, it would say Perle, which is pearl in English, but it's supposed to be pronounced in English. And I have absolutely no idea how you pronounce this. Uh, pearl? I don't know. Uh, but a nice color anyway. And then we have these two gray colors at the very bottom here, Winterberry and Peach Rose. And Winterberry is a cool gray color, a light cool gray color, uh, whereas uh, the Peach Rose is a warm, light, warm gray color. You can clearly see it here. It has some sort of a more beige tone, actually, but it's very light. So a lot of really, really nice uh, colors. And perhaps you noticed one thing that when I swatched them, there was a lot of dust from the lid. And I have no idea if it is the lid of these pencils because I noticed it too when I used the 120 set, not the metallics, um, they just broke. But the 120 set that I did a review of uh, a couple of months ago, um, they also dusted a lot when I used them, but I don't know if it's this printing paper I have used to um, to do the, sw the swatch chart on. Perhaps it is this paper because it's uh, quite hard, actually. Um, so perhaps they will not dust as much in a coloring book. We will have to put this to the test in different coloring books and test these pencils to see if they dust just as much as they did here. But none of them broke during uh, this swatching. Uh, also really uh, a great improvement. Uh, I don't know if you have seen the metallic review I did, oh, the review of the metallic pencils, but here I had a couple uh, and they just kept on breaking also when I swatched them and used them afterwards. It was really annoying. So you can see here, one of the things I also really like about this pastel tin set is that this is a swatch chart from the 120 set. And uh, I th a thing I have always complained about when I use these castle art is that the blue color range here is a bit limited. It's a lot of darker blue colors in the 120 set. And the only really light, light color is the Cer Cerulean blue middle. And it's actually quite bright and still dark. Even if you ease the pressure, you have to ease it a lot if you want a light blue color with these pencils because they are really bright, lovely blue colors, but they are also a lot darker. So I think that this pastel tin set is a wonderful, absolutely wonderful addition to the 
other sets from Castle Art because here we have all of these light blue colors that don't actually exist in the 120 set of the normal coloring pencils, uh, the soft touch ones. I'm I think it's time now for me to stop yapping about and then go to the test. We need to test these pencils to see how they uh, lay down on the page, how you how much layering is needed and uh, how much they blend. Let's try it out. But before we delve more into this review, I want you to consider something. Is this review helpful for you? Is it something that you would use to decide if you want to buy these coloring pencils or not? Well, if you think that this is helpful, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to help it grow and to help me make more reviews of coloring pencil brands in the future. Thank you very much for your support. And now let's get back to the review. So the first uh, book I want to test them in is uh, The Magiske Jungle or The Magical Jungle by Johanna Bassford. And the first time I have this uh, page that I use for my um, when I test out pencils here and these this leaf was colored with the castle art um, the normal pencils the 120 set the soft touch ones and um, it was very difficult because these pencils were difficult to layer, they dusted, and it took a lot of layering and pressing hard to cover the tooth of the paper here. Uh, this one was colored with uh, Black Widow pencils and also this one, and uh, this one with Prismacolor and also this golden leaf here. So I use it to compare it to how they perform, but those pencils were Mm, a bit more scratchy than these pastel tints. So I think that I want to try them out on different paper. So this sort of paper is not as hard as the printing paper. It's more soft here. Um, so I think that I will just choose some random, random uh, colors. Here I want the um, Angelica as a dark color and I think also the green flower, but that's because I have fallen in love with these two colors, especially the green flower. So the green flower is 27, number 27, and Angelica number 29. So I will just choose a random um, leaf here. And I think that I want to choose this leaf here because it's next to the other leaf here that was also colored with the castle arts. So um, I will just take the Angelica and begin with the darkest color. Perhaps I should choose a third one to color this, but you can see that I like to use my um, glitter pens or metallic pens to um, do the ribbons and the leaves and the edges. So it will probably just be one of those I will use. And uh, Please note, I am already noticing that there is hardly a little bit there, but hardly any uh, pencil dust here when I color in this book compared to the printing uh, paper where I did my swatching. You can clearly see that there is only a very little and there were a lot more dust when I used the printing paper. I also think that the, um, I'm not pressing very hard, uh, I might add, that they are laying down okay in this book. This is just one layer, so it's not enough to cover the paper of the, the tooth of the paper it's called, but um, let's see what happens when we uses the green flower. Beautiful flower. And you can see here only a little bit of dust from the pencil. There is some, but it's not as much as when I swatch them. 
So already we have found a paper that works better with the castle arts than normal printing paper. So that was the first layer and it's uh, quite easy actually to use these ones in uh, this Johanna Basford book compared to um, to the normal castle art. I think that these works actually a bit better. So if I lay down another layer here, pressing a bit harder, but not that much, you can see here, you can clearly see that we have a second layer. And now that I have uh, worked my way into the lead, so to speak, of this pencil, there is very, very, very little pencil dust. And that was the second layer. Oh, I think that I accidentally... Well, never mind that. This is just a test. So let us take another layer of the green flower and I am just taking this color up into the angelica to see how they blend and they actually blend nicely I would say and these are pastel tint colors which means that we will not have this uh, the sort of coverage than the other colors uh, will give us. So it's not going to be uh, as bright a color as this leaf, for example. It actually looks very, very nice. So if I add a third layer, let's see how it works. So let's just concentrate on this area. Yes, and I have uh, put a little more pressure on. So the harder you press, the more dust. I don't know, because now I am also pressing and there's hardly any dust. I think it's still something to do with the paper. You can see here, this third layer, you actually have a very good coverage of the paper. If I just add this green flower here, I think I will just go down here also. You can see here, if I take it up to the camera, you can see here three layers nice coverage two layers this is okay but you can still see the tooth of the paper the white here you can still see it but with three layers it's not as obvious and uh, this one i hardly dare to say it i think i used six or seven layers and then i had to press extremely hard at the end to cover the white of the paper with the normal castle art pencils so um these pastel tint, they actually seem to be covering the tooth of the paper, the white here, the white of the paper, much, much better. I'm just adding a fourth layer here. And here. And you can see here, oh, my pencils are just trying to escape. You can see here, you can hardly see the white of the paper anymore. And we have also a nice transition here from the one color to the other. So four layers in Johanna Besford books compared to the normal castle art. I think it was six or seven layers and pressing very hardly to cover the white of the paper and here four layers and compare it to the two where you can still see the white.
there's a much better coverage of the pastel tin pencils in this Johanna Besford book than with the normal castle art. I think that that is a huge success and uh, a very big improvement from the normal castle art to these pastel tints, I must say. So let's try them in another coloring book. So let's try in another coloring book with a different type of paper and a different sort of color of paper. Uh, let us try coloring in Maria Trolle's Twilight Garden. And if you saw my metallic review, you know that I have started this text page to um, use new coloring pencils in. Um, so I have chosen four new colors of the pastel tints and I will try to color this flower and perhaps some uh, leaves here. So let's begin with the Savannah number 24 and the Cow's Lip number 20. These are the two green colors I will be using. And then I have chosen the Wisteria number 42 and the Jelly Bean number 45 for this flower. So let's uh, try to see how it works. So I think that I will begin here with the Wisteria. and color here and you can see this paper is not as white as the paper in Johanna Besford that's why I said it's it's different it's um, also a th it's a thick kind of paper and it has this um, not even off-white tone I think it's more yellowish uh, in the tone here so let's see how they perform but I must say that look at how they just lay down on the page almost no dust here and then we just take the jelly bean which is a or pink color and lay it down and you can see there is hardly any dust there was a little bit of dust here but nothing around here so that was one layer and you can see the colors and it looks very nice. So let's try to add another layer. And I actually think that we have already got gotten also a nice coverage here. So let's try another layer of this pink color. And here we have more dust. I think it's it has something to do not only with the paper, but how hard you press. No, because now I press hard here, and then it doesn't dust. And over here I pressed a bit harder, and it was dusty. Hmm. And down here also a bit harder, no dust. Okay, that's uh, certainly food for thought, but let's see here. You can see here two layers and it has a very nice coverage of the paper. I must say that I think I would have to use glasses if I could uh, try to spot some white of the paper. I actually think that two layers and it's done. I don't need to layer anymore because the white of the paper is covered. I did not expect that from only two layers of these pastel tints. Wow! I mean, I mean, it did take four layers in the Johanna Besford book. Well, um, okay, so let's see the green ones. I think that I want to use the darker green, the Savannah for the stem. And that's it. No dust. And it's just covered in color. So um, I think I will use this uh, cow's lip to color this leaf. 
there one tiny little dust particle and that's it and this is a very very light color and I don't press hard now I just lay down the color in the third leaf also one tiny particle of dust And that's it. What a nice coverage. One layer. You could add more, but um, this is a light color and I don't want it to be too, um, too dark. Not dark, but you know what I mean. I don't want it to be too much. I actually think that one, two layers here and one layer here of the greens covers the paper very, very nicely. This is a huge surprise, I must say, and a wonderful surprise if you want to compare it. We have the metallic pens here, and uh, you can see here I only did one or two layers, and you can clearly see the tooth of the paper here. I didn't quite finish uh, the leaf, I didn't want to, I didn't have time. But you can clearly see the white of the paper shining through with the metallic pencils, and over here the pastel tints, one or two layers, boom, it's done. This is a lovely, lovely surprise, I must say. A much, much better coverage here. I think that I will just find some blue colors and uh, color this one. Just to see if it continues. Does it have something to do with the colors or is it just these pastel tints? So um, let's just try just with this flower. I have here the Larkspur number 39 and um, the Bluebell number 38. So, let's take the dark color, the Larkspur. And the Bluebell. Okay, so let's see. Here, you can still see a bit of white of the paper, but not much. So let's give it a round two, just like the other flower here. And one more layer of the bluebell. There was a little bit of dust, but not much. And here, yeah, a nice coverage. Of course, you could still layer uh, a lot more if you wanted to, but it's hardly necessary. If I wanted to do more to this flower, it would be to find a darker color, which would not be a pastel tint color, but a... Um, one from the normal castle art set and then just add a bit of shadow up here and down here. But that would be it. It's done. So in this book on this coloring paper, the pastel tint colors really perform much better than in uh, the Johanna Basford book. And it was still very good there compared to the normal castle art pencils. Wow. Let's try it on a third, in a third book, on a third type of paper. Well, it wouldn't be a uh, normal good test if I didn't try it out in one of uh, Hannah Carlson's books. And that is because I, as you know, if you follow me on my channel, you know that I love Hannah Carlson's books. And uh, between them and Maria Troll and Johanna Bassford, those are probably the coloring books I color in the most. This is Tales from the Forest Kingdom, and if you know Hannah Carlson, you would know that her pages are completely filled with details and a lot of things, so I can't, it's very difficult to choose a coloring test page uh, in this book. So I've just chosen the first page where we have these small mushrooms, 
And um, I think it's small enough t- for us to try these uh, pencils out here. And I have chosen uh, new colors, the Juniper Lime, number 22, and the Sunflower, number 21. And I will be using these colors for these I think it's stones. I think that they are covered with moss, mossy like colors. And as we don't have any reds in this pastel tint, I have chosen uh, the coral blush number eight and uh, the blushing rose number nine um, to color the mushrooms. So let's use the coral blush first. to color some of these mushrooms. I think that I will color them entirely with this one and then the dots will be with the blushing rose. And uh, this paper is also thick. I don't think it's quite as thick as um, the paper in Maria Troll's books, but almost. And it also is not completely white. It also has this a tiny bit of a creamy tone to it. And I just have a normal pressure here with these mushrooms. And you can see the color goes down very nicely in this paper. Whoops. Don't have to throw them around. And the blushing rose to the dots here. And if you have noticed one thing, I have no dust. No dust in this book. A little bit in the Johanna Besford book, almost nothing, but still a little bit in the Maria Tolle book, and here, no dust. So I think it has something to do with the paper, this dusting with these pencils. So if you use the right kind of paper to these pencils, you won't have all of this dusting that we um, saw when I swatch them. And then I will just use the coral, bl what was it? Coral blush, coral blush, blushing rose, almost the same. And uh, to just quite lightly layer here with the stems of these uh, mushrooms. So here you will be able to see the white of the paper. So just to hold it up so you can hope, see more clearly, you can see that one layer almost, not entirely, but almost covers the paper, the white of the paper here. When you just lay a light layer, you can see more of the paper. Of course, if you have a normal pressure, then it almost covers with just one layer in this book. Both with the coral blush and the blushing uh, rose. So um, let's try to color these stones and I will just lay it down here. This is the sunflower, by the way, the lightest of the two colors. And it's extremely easy to um, use these pencil in this Hannah Carlson book. And I actually expected this because if you have seen some of my beginner tutorials, you will have seen the beginner tutorial with Daphne the Nymph that was from Tales from Atlantis, another Hannah Carlson book. And I used the normal castle art sets there and they laid down very nicely on the paper in that book. So Hannah Carlson's books, they are really, really good when you use the castle art pencils. I will just take this, uh, that was the juniper lime here. And that was one layer. And one layer with a light pressure, it doesn't cover it uh, completely, the tooth of the paper on the white here. But there's room for more layering and blending. Um, 
and let's see how many layers we have to have in this book to cover it. So I will take the sunflower yet again and lay it down on this little mossy rock. Then the juniper lime. And we can already see a difference from this one to the one next to it, which has just one layer. So let's try another one here and add two more layers on that to see what three layers will do compared to two and one. So that was the next layer, the second layer here, and a third layer. So just have to yeah. So here one layer, two layer layers, and you can clearly see here from one to two layers it covers it very nicely. And when we go to three layers, you cannot see the tooth of the paper or the white of the paper. I don't know why I keep saying the tooth. The white of the paper, you can't see it anymore. So three different coloring books, three different kinds of paper, dust and four layers, a little bit of dust and two layers, three layers, but no dust. So that was the coloring book test. So this is the last of the review. So I will just make a conclusion. So these pastel tint pencils from Castle Arts have lovely colors, really, really nice uh, pastel colors. And they are a great addition to the other Castle Arts sets. If you have them, then these bring more light colors uh, compared to the 120 set. They are actually easy to uh, to buy nowadays uh, in Europe, as I explained in the Castle Art Metallics review I did a couple of weeks ago. These pencils can now be bought on the German Amazon site, and that means that every citizen in the EU, and not only people living in France and Germany and the UK, can get a hold of these pencils. They are frequently on sale from Amazon, and if you buy for more than 69 euros on Amazon, then the shipping is free. So no more tax, uh, more taxes and import fees and uh, extra shipping costs from getting them from the United States. So uh, that's a huge improvement. Lovely colors, also an improvement. Something that Castle Art should still work on, uh, the, the wood for the pencils. The wood is uh, not good enough uh, still. It's uh, more cheap and it um, breaks easily uh, compared to other coloring pencil brands. I must say that uh, I have changed my sharpener and uh, these pencils were much easier to sharpen than the rest of the Castle Art pencils, but the wood was still damaged by the sharpener. And this is a sharpener meant for uh, sharpening um, actually pencils with a softer core, so it's a sharpener that's not as uh, hard to use like this one from Faber-Castell and also this Stettler uh, Norris sharpener, which is for harder pencils. So the wood can still be worked on. When you use them on printing paper, there is a lot of uh, pencil dust, but it depends on the paper. So if you use them in some coloring books uh, from Johanna Basford, which are very white used uh, all over the world, the paper is much, much better to use these coloring pencils for. And as you can see on the coloring test page, this would have worked very nicely if I could find it. Um, here it was. Then you can see only four layers compared to the normal castle art which took seven layers here and a lot of hard pressing to get the paper covered so that's a huge improvement there was a little bit of dusting in this book 
But as I said, only four layers, and then it was covered completely. And if you don't want uh, to cover it completely, if you want some of the white of the paper, then two layers is actually enough in this book. If you use it in other coloring books, like uh, those printed <coughs> on this paper, like Maria Trolles from Twilight Garden, then you will notice that it covers after only two layers and it lays down very very nicely with this flower and this one and here there was almost no dusting and if you use paper like the paper in Hannah Carlson's books well there was no dusting and one or two layers is quite enough if you use four layers three or four layers down here then it's completely covered but if you only do it once or twice then there's also a beautiful coverage the background is colored with uh, one of the blue colors i think it was the blue mist i used and it's just one layer and it's actually quite beautiful for a background color here so these pastel tint uh, pencils are frankly the best of the castle art pencils that i have uh, reviewed and tested they are easy to come by. They work so beautifully in coloring books. Uh, they have a nice coverage. They are easy to layer and blend, and you don't have to add a lot of layers like you do with the other castle arts. Uh, there is a bit of a dusting, but depending on the paper, then you can avoid that. They are much easier to sharpen. The leads don't crack and break like the other castle art pencils I have tested and used. So yes, Castle Art has certainly improved. And I think that these are the best coloring pencil from Castle Art at the moment, I must say. But the wood, it would be a very good idea if they changed the wood to something that doesn't uh, get broken, they, no matter what kind of sharpener you use. So these definitely worth the money. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this review of the Castle Art 48 Premium Pastel Tint Pencils. I hope that you will like uh, this video and please subscribe to my channel for more reviews like this in the future. I also have a lot of different coloring tutorials on my channel. I have beginner tutorials, practice tutorials. I have a how to color series where I explain in depth how to color different sort of things like a winter night sky or glass or bouquet backgrounds and so on. So this was it for today. Have a very nice day. Happy coloring. Bye.